And thank you for telling me about these mathematics. I've completely forgotten that. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Uh, yes, I uh, became chair of uh, what's called the Danish National Research Data Management Forum right after I stopped as dean. Uh, I was dean for a very long time and never heard about research data management and suddenly I became chairman of this forum with nobody else sitting in the forum, by the way, at the moment, <laughs> uh, which was uh, the best time. Um, but it was clear with this very little amount of money we got and a very long strategy written by all the stakeholders, uh, I need somebody to collaborate with. Um, and it's also clear that I need all this, the stakeholders in there. Uh, that means all the eight universities, uh, the, the Royal Library, the State Library, today that's one library in the National Library, and the National Archive. We needed them all in there. Also, because the funding was so small, uh, we also need the vice chancellor's office in there because we really needed co-funding. Um, we need the researchers. We need to go and ask researchers, what do you need? The answer was, we need you to leave us alone because we are very busy. <coughs> but still, some of them really would like to collaborate and had uh, severe needs for, for storage and things like that. Librarians knew a lot about this, was enormous help. Uh, from day one, um, but we ended up, when I was done looking around, we ended up with 30 people having to meet and discuss this strategy. And I was the chairman and I had not the usual power uh, in regards to any of them. So will that work? Uh, in fact, uh, people agreed to work quite hard on this. Um, we agreed, first of all, that when we meet, we meet for the whole day because we come from all around the country. It's a small country, I know, but still people had to travel to, to come for the meeting. And also it became quite clear what we should aim for. Not exactly what, but we had a little bit of money for uh, uh, infrastructure pilot projects, right? So we had to make a call. And so we spent some time formulating the call. It was clear there was not too much money, so we needed funding, co-funding. We needed uh, maybe to take some existing infrastructure and make it better to share and better metadata and so on. We need to find some projects by which we could help each other to lift each other across the country working in the forum. We need to anchor what we did uh, in each institution uh, and you already heard from the technical university who went far ahead so we need to bring them in sometimes and learn from them also uh, and we need to train the trainers so when the, the scientists they make applications and they have to make a data management plan. Those who, the grant office people, they know how to help them. So that was pretty, pretty easy. <coughs> uh, so what was the, 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 the activities for training the trainers? Well, we are, are found out, like 10 years behind United Kingdom, far behind Finland, far behind the Netherlands. But we, act, we have to act like scientists. We don't have to redo it all ourselves. So we invited Elixir, this network, uh, uh, European network, in. they knew a lot about it. The 3 gu data center from the Netherlands, Kevin Ashley from the Digital Curation Center, and uh, Andrew Cox and so on. The other day we had Baron Mons for two days telling us that European Open Science Cloud is completely wrong work. It's not going to be European, it's going to be a world. It's not going to be open, sounds like uh, it's free, it's very expensive. It's not just for science, and cloud is, no, it's an internet of things. But anyway, we learned a lot from him. So we, we, we go to the Netherlands and say, can we buy yours, your time to come and tell us uh, the thing you have? Can we use your internet to make some kind of flipped classroom classes and so on? That's how we try to move ahead. Uh, some of the collaborative activities in the forum is on here, or indeed all of them. Uh, the, um, the last one is, in fact, uh, a template for how to make a policy. We wanted some kind of template for that, so we do not make it impossible to collaborate uh, uh, among the universities when we are done. So we like to have a template saying um, that when you make your, your policy, try to do it following this template. Not the same, but a template at least. 
This one, the digital data management guide. Here, all institutions participate. The idea is you come in here with the data, you describe your data, or maybe you're not able to describe it, but then they ask you a million questions, you answer them, and then they should tell you where is the infrastructure with the right tools to work with this kind of data. Uh, <coughs> that's, that's a wish. Whether we get there, we will see. Uh, we will get uh, some way at least. Maybe this is also interesting. This was, I thought, for wet labs only, e-lab books, but no. People who are humanities, they also, they also need e-lab books. Uh, so this is a bit like if you want to buy a family car, you go and read in a motor magazine, and somebody has tested the different kind of e-lab books, and you find out which e-lab books fit your family. Uh, <coughs> Then we build infrastructure. As I said, we, we pick an infrastructure which is already existing here, but then we put advanced metadata schemes on it, uh, advanced sharing and things like that. Similar for, for um, a big data problem uh, uh, where we measure energy data, both historical but also re uh, near real time data. We, 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 we use some own cloud things which is already existing, but we try to make it right for this kind of projects. Uh, I, I will return to this one, the National Science App Store, um, in, a, in a minute, because it sounds a bit like something I, I learned from Norway. They spend a lot of money, and they're much uh, f uh, ahead of us. But I will re return to that. This one, oops, this one here, is the last one, actionable biomarkers. Uh, that's trying to collect all the biomarkers uh, in life science, which are scattered all over uh, different uh, 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 places, different storage. Try to put it together, and try to put it together also with uh, a workflow for text mining, full text scientific papers, and see what you get. This is uh, a bit like what Sverker was saying. We have this health data. Try, uh, try to make better use of that. Maybe that could be some naughty collaboration. And <clears throat> uh, I think the problem when it comes to open data, we need in Denmark much more top-down uh, uh, initiative. We need the ministry and the Reuters College to come together and say, this is a strategy that we need also in Denmark, uh, like they've done in Finland, like they've done in the Netherlands, like they've done elsewhere. We have a, a small pot of money and a bottom-up approach can only bring us so far. I think now something needs to happen. Uh, I will not, uh, 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 I mean, I, I do know that Finland is far ahead, but I'm looking down to Germany because they also was a little bit behind, but now they start to move. They have some idea about federated, connected, but distributed research data infrastructure. They do not build towers, but they're trying to, to connect them. Uh, and that's uh, the, the Deutsche Forschung Gemeinschaft has started a project investing some money. Of course, the Helmholtz institutions, they also have to be able to talk to each other. Uh, so they also, in fact, invest, invested quite a lot more money. And here's another project in its, in its making. The scientific information infrastructure will come up with some ideas like that. Should Denmark join this or should we join some Nordic uh, network collaboration or both? I think that's some of the questions we need to answer. Now, uh, here's uh, the guy who maybe is to blame. <laughs> uh, that's maybe the problem, why, we, why we, we need to fix. Not the person here himself, but the system. I mean, he has been a PhD student, postdoc for many years now. Finally, he got a tenure track job. He had applied for all the money. He tried many times, but the, because the success rate is only 10%. And now, bloody well, they also have to make a data management plan. Uh, so the system is a bit of a problem. The, the mission has become almost impossible. We try to move in. We don't make data management planning in, in, in a new way in Denmark. We take the one from the Digital Curation Center, make it Danish, so the Danish foundations are, are in there, and help him with that. Then we have built uh, an own cloud-based uh, 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 cloud, hooked up with a company spinned out of own cloud, helping us building uh, and updating our cloud. But what we really need, we need tools on the data. So we have hooked it up now to uh, a 
high performance center, high performance computer, sorry, called Abacus up there, and another one for, for life science data. We need more apps up there because uh, biologists do not know how to code for this background, so we need all the tools that the biologists and humanities they need in order to work on a big computer on the data. And then we also need to keep the data. So we have made an agreement with Zenota. Can we just push a button and then leave it with you to look after it? Or indeed, could we do it with a national archive? So in this way, we try to take this, this problem over there through to the end. Uh, we are not that far on open data yet. Uh, we have all our kind of ideas, but that's how far we are at the moment.